good morning to one and all present on this online platform today we have gathered here on this online platform to celebrate the 23rd international youth day 2023 oh, yes, on the theme green skills for youth towards a sustainable world may I now request professor vasanthi rajendran the professor and head Department uh, Center for Training, Orientation, and Capacity Building, and the Center for National and International Collaboration of the Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of Youth Development to welcome the participants and the dignitaries on this online platform and also present a brief background about this program. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much, David. Uh, First of all, uh, welcome to all uh, present in this online platform uh, on uh, the occasion of International Youth Day 2023. Uh, I extend a very warm and hearty welcome to all the uh, those present on the online uh, for this uh, International Youth Day celebrations. Uh, a special welcome to uh, our uh, guest speaker, uh, uh, Mr. Jaipan Gore, uh, the master trainer from Se Sector Skill Councils for Green Jobs. Uh, I also welcome uh, Mr. Bala Subramaniam, Manager, Strategy and Operations Sector Skill Council for Green Jobs, um, uh, who uh, you know I would like to thank. Also, take this opportunity to thank them for collaborating with Arjun Avaidi for organizing this very important program. Um, I welcome all the uh, I mean, my faculty colleagues who have joined this program, all the students. And the other youth who have also, you know, registered. It was a very surprising, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, for us to see that there were a number of youth who have registered for this. You know, when we have put this up on our website, uh, which shows the importance of this, uh, the theme of this International Youth Day, that is uh, green skills for youth uh, towards a sustainable uh, future. So this, uh, with this, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, the kind of response, we are really happy because this is a very important program that we, I think for the first time we are organizing on this theme, uh, though this theme has been, uh, you know, in, I mean, uh, being uh, concerned for quite some time now uh, in our country and across the globe. But the International Youth Day, you know, focusing on this theme has, you know, renewed our interest. And, you know, the objectives of this, uh, this International Youth Day also um, you know, to create awareness on this importance of this theme, the green skills for youth jobs uh, for youth is very, very, uh, you know, uh, relevant. And uh, we hope this program will be useful to all those who are present here on this uh, online platform on this webinar. Uh, I would also like to uh, take this opportunity to thank the director who actually, you know, um, uh, encouraged us to organize this program and who in fact uh, was supposed to join us you know and uh, give an inaugural address uh, but uh, due to his preoccupation he has he is not able to join us but uh, he has I mean, conveyed his uh, you know his uh, greetings to all of you and uh, and i take this opportunity now to actually to uh, give an overview of this um, why we are organizing this international youth day and this theme of green skills for youth towards a sustainable uh, you know world uh, uh, with with a small presentation because this will make it very clear the purpose the objective of this program and why we are organizing and what is the need to focus on this uh, you know green skills for for the youth so i'll just make a small presentation giving a background and an overview of uh, the need the objective of this program So the outline of my presentation is to give a brief background because you know we need to understand the issue uh, properly. So the outline I would like to give the genesis why we are celebrating the International Youth Day. Uh, the, on then go on to discuss about the theme of the International Youth Day. And because the theme is green skills, we also need to know what are these green skills. As I said, this is a new concept which is there for the last few uh, you know few years now, and then. The importance of green skills for youth and what is india's target for the green economy and what are the several green initiatives green skill initiatives in india so this i'll just quickly cover up the top I mean, 
uh, give a background. Since we have the guest speaker, Mr. Japan Jor, and also Mr. Balasubramanian, who will be, you know, talking in details about these issues. What are the, you know, uh, avenues available for green skills, and you know, all the thing that the government is doing, everything, it's, uh, you know, from the sector skill green for uh, green jobs. I just thought I'll give a brief background. So next, David. So the genesis, actually, if you see, it was now this. It's the 23rd year of the, we are celebrating the International Youth Day. Uh, this originated, I mean, started in 1999 uh, when the United Nations, you know, on the recommendations of the World Conference of of Ministers of Youth, you know, declared 12th August as International Youth Day. And since then, we have been celebrating it, and on various themes, on various issues of concern for the youth. So we had some very interesting. Uh, themes like mental health, intergeneration solidarity was last year's uh, theme, the safe spaces for youth, uh, then civic engagement like this. Every year, we uh, it is on a theme that is uh, very relevant for the youth. So when we come to the theme of this international, uh, today, this uh, 2023 International Youth Day, uh, it's because the world is now, you know, looking for, you know, it's looking for, a, you know, enter, making the entire world a global economy as a green economy, going for a green transition. So the shift towards an environmental, I mean, environmentally sustainable and climate friendly world is critical, which is not only for the global climate crisis, but also to achieve these sustainable development goals. So the, uh, for both to address the climate crisis, as well as to achieve the sustainable development goals, it's very important that, you know, every economy across the world, all the countries, you know, try to attain, I mean, I mean target for a green economy or a green transition. So this transition actually will depend on how uh, you know, we are acquiring green skills. So how these green skills are the population, the working population are, you know, have these green skills is very important. And and not if you see population, I think the most segment, all of us will agree on this platform that it's the youth who are important segment of the population, the working population. And so, you know, ensuring green skills among the youth is very, very, uh, very, very important for you know to to address this global climate crisis as well as to be able to achieve the sustainable development goals so that is why the theme for this year the 23rd uh, national youth day is you know, green skills for the youth towards a sustainable world so uh, let's look at the objectives of this international youth day the objective is actually to raise awareness of green skills Many of us, I'm sure, on this platform will not be knowing. In fact, myself, even myself, I was trying to, you know, try to find out what is this green skills. Of course, we know green skills are something which has to do with, you know, which will make the world's, I mean, economy sustainable, uh, something which will not, you know, will not be wasting the resources, which will be resource efficient, all these things. But let's try to recall and to create this awareness among all those who are not aware of the green skills is one of the objective. And uh, what is its relevance for achieving the SDGs? We are just having another seven years uh, to achieve, you know, this as SDGs. So, uh, you know, what uh, the importance or relevance of, you know, the green skills for achieving the SDGs is, and what is the role of young people in green transition? This is the objective or uh, objective one of the International Youth Day. The other objective is to equip st stakeholders with the knowledge and information necessary to understand the importance of green skills for the young people. Uh, the other objective is to showcase the policies because several governments across the world have have you know evolved policies and practices uh, that can nurture and de uh, the development of green skills among people. So to showcase what is it? Let's so in this uh, in this webinar we'll be showcasing the policies and practices that India has actually developed for you know for inculcating these green skills among the young people, and also to provide a platform for stakeholders to exchange views on such topics. So this webinar is a platform, one beginning we are doing from Arjun Awadi, you know, to ensure that all the stakeholders, you know, the, I mean, the youth, the student, the faculty, all the, you know, youth workers, everybody, you know, all these stakeholders who are I mean, important, the sector skill council, all these are stakeholders. So how we come together in a platform and we exchange the views on these topics. So these are the four objectives of the International Youth Day 2023. So then coming to, you know, we are talking of green skills. So let's see what are green skills. So what are green skills? 
green skills are knowledge, abilities, values, and attitudes needed to live to live in, not only to live in, but to develop and support a sustainable and resource efficient society. So green skills are skills which will enable a sustainable um, an economy or society and not only sustainable but also resource efficient we have to be resource efficient because we are fast depleting all the resources in on the earth so we have realized that and we have to ensure that if it has to be sustainable that is if all the resources have to be available to the future generations too so we need to be very uh, you know uh, um, and concerned about it so knowledge abilities values and attitudes to live in and develop and support a sustainable and resource efficient society the skills which promote these things and also they include the technical knowledge and skills that enable the use of green technologies so there are a lot of green technologies which mr japan gore and mr bal subran will be you know making in their uh, will be talking in their presentation uh, you know which is uh, very important I mean, the, which was well, I mean, the green skills include the knowledge of these technical skills also technical knowledge and skills so green skills are also called that you know they are all very interdisciplinary in nature they are also called as skills for the future they are called skills for green jobs and they're relevant for people of all ages and especially to the youth actually so where the younger people the role of youth in contributing for the green transition because it is their future and it is you know and uh, the, the initiative has to go beyond 2032. So for a longer time, it is if if the uh, youth uh, are you know inculcated with the green skills, uh, you know that will have a more long-lasting impact. And that is that that is why the theme of this International Youth Day is you know green skills for the youth. Next, David. So important coming to the importance of green skills for youth. As I said, uh, we are just seven years away from the SDG uh, to achieve the SDG goals. So there's going to be a summit next month, SDG summit, uh, which is uh, marking the halfway point for implementation of the 2020 agenda for sustainable development. So it's important to recognize how the green transition is directly linked to green jobs for young people. So according to you see the ILO, the International Labour Organization, uh, that this green transition that is happening across the world will create 8.4 million jobs for young people by 2030. So that 8.4 million jobs is quite a huge number. But are our young people equipped for it? Do they have the green skills? That that is the importance of you know the the theme for this. That is why the theme for this um, International Youth Day is to ensure that you know. This 8.4 million jobs that are going to be created because of transition to a green economy, the young people will have to be, you know, have to have these green skills. So these uh, these jobs are which are called green jobs, jobs that contribute to contribute to preserving or restoring the environment by this by supporting the environmentally friendly process or through the production of green products and services. These green jobs. So uh, young people have to be equipped with green skills. So they can actually, uh, you know, uh, contribute to this uh, transition that the entire world is, uh, you know, uh, in the process of. David, huh. so let's look at what is India's target for the green economy. Very interesting figures, actually. So if you see, India has committed to reducing emission emission and int intensity of its gross domestic product. That is the India's total economy's contribution every year by 45% by 2030. That's a big target, you know, reducing the emission intensity by 45%, almost by 50%, which is a huge task, actually. And also achieving 50% cumulative electric power installed capacity from non-fossil fuel-based energy resources by 2030. I don't know how far India has progressed in this target. It's quite a huge target, a huge target. And if India has to achieve these targets, the youth have to play an important role. And that is why I, I feel that the International uh, Youth Day uh, you know, is you know focusing on this theme because India and the other countries have a huge target before them to achieve and it's only the youth who will be able to help any country to achieve actually whatever we are targeting to you know to ensure that our economy becomes green 
green, that is sustainable and resource efficient. So, uh, and according to another analysis by Council on Energy, Environment and Water, uh, India will be creating, um, you know, we, 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 we just talked in the previous slide about 8.4 million jobs, but India, out of that, 3.4 million jobs will be in the sunrise sector of solar and wind energy by 2030 in India, 1.2 million jobs in the electric vehicle transition, 1.8 million in the servicing industry for sustainable cooling solutions by 2037. So also high job potential exists in other emerging green sectors like biofuels, circular economy of waste and nature-based solutions. So this, these are the targets uh, for the Indian economy in which youth have a big role to play. Next David. So if you see the status, if this being the target, what is the status of, you know, how are the youth have, whether they are, you know, acquiring these green skills, whether they are ready to enable our country to reach this target, you, you see that we are actually uh, lagging a lot. There is a shortage of green skills among young people and the skill gap actually is an obstacle for young people to participate in the world of work uh, that is shifting towards the green economy. And if this trend persists by 2020, you know, more than 60% of young people will lack the skills required actually to, you know, to convert into a green economy. So this 60% is a huge figure. If you see uh, the number of people, number of young people, and 60% of this not ready to, you know, not ready with the green skills is, you know, it's, it's, it's an, if you, I, I mean, if you wanted word to describe to it, it could be a nightmare. So, how the government is going to achieve it and how you know the youth are going to raise to that how are the government initiatives and the other stakeholders initiative will ensure that the 60 percent of the youth also acquire the green skills necessary for us to transit into a trans a green economy our goal by 2030 and beyond also is also very important so let us see what are the initiatives government has taken up uh, government of india we have the surya mitra program for solar energy projects the vayu mitra program for wind energy projects the national green skill development program for diverse initiatives related to forest and environment manage management and india's top three green skills you know where we are you know specializing on is carbon footprinting environmental law and sustainable con sustainability consultancy uh, consultant consulting which are opening which could open doors you know uh, uh, for you know for a range of green skill jobs which are, which will be available for the youth uh, this green skills development programs of the government of india is covering a diverse field you know like pollution monitoring, sewage treatment plant. We're looking at you know, what are what kind of jobs are there for the youth. So these are the areas where, you know, youth actually, uh, uh, the, the diverse areas where uh, the skill development, green skills are being promoted. Pollution monitoring, sewage treatment plant, effluent treatment plant, uh, you know, the waste management, forest management, water budgeting, auditing, conservation of river dolphins, wildlife management, uh, people's biodiversity register, mangrove conservation, bamboo management, and so on. So, uh, so the duration for these, it's the the skill development programs of Government of India are covering these areas, and the duration of the courses actually range from eighty hours to five sixty hours, different levels, uh, different packages, such as NSQF packages, uh, which uh, Mr. Japan Board will actually, I think, uh, talk about. Uh, and in the first stage, actually, what the government is planning is to create a master trainers, a specialist who will further train the youth across the country. And so in this context, I would like to share with you, already our Genoid is taking steps uh, to collaborate with the Sector Council for Green Jobs uh, for creating master trainers on green skills so that, you know, the master trainers are, our Genoid also plays a role, you know, in this very important, uh, you know, uh, target of Government of India to achieve a green economy or a sustainable economy. So we would like to, we are already in the process of discussion with Sector Council for Green Jobs, uh, you know, how we can play uh, an important role in creating this pool of master trainers. So soon we'll be uh, launching this program, uh, you know, after the due process. So all, all these courses that are being offered are, you know, as I said, uh, NSQF, um, 
qualify qualified uh, thing will we'll have these qualifications so uh, if you see i would like i would not like to talk about the sector council for skilled jobs because mr they are the two persons who should be talking or who can be giving you more information mr bala subramaniam and mr jepan go they will be talking about the sector skill council for skilled job green jobs where they are you know focusing on three pillars uh, you know renewable energy environment forest and climate change and sustainable development uh, the whole uh, webinar today the topic uh, you know the green skills uh, for youth will be for uh, on, uh, on uh, will be actually dealt in detail by mr jepan go uh, who is a master trainer uh, in the sector skill councils so with this background i thought you should you need to know what are green skills what are the government's targets and how we are going to achieve it and how uh, the sector skill council for green jobs which is in one of the apex uh, organizations or bodies which is actually you know ensuring that uh, we we, sh we should be able to uh, you know achieve the sustainable development goals overcome the climate uh, climate change i mean climate change uh, you know problems you know through Cleaning our economy. So, with this uh, few words, uh, giving a background about the program, I would like to once again, you know, welcome all the uh, young youth uh, who are present on this online uh, webinar. Uh, you know, and I see a lot of interest just before this. Uh, just before we started, I received a few calls also from the youth saying, Madam, we could not actually uh, no, do the registration. Can we join through the link? And, you know, we are interested. In, uh, in participating so the interest generated by youth by one or two you know this kind of uh, you know calls that i i received uh, shows that we have a great future if the youth actually are you know are interested in this green skills and acquire these green skills and contribute uh, to the growth of our I mean, to the development of our country uh, as a green economy because if we do not do that i think all of us uh, will understand the consequences uh, what would be the consequences in the future if we do not transit to a green economy with green skills you know uh, among the entire population more specifically the youth so with this uh, i i i thank all the participants who are here who have listened patiently to this uh, brief background. I would now like to request David to actually introduce the uh, guest speaker, a uh, guest expert speaker, Mr. Jepan Go, uh, which is the crux of this program. Thank you, David. Thank you very much, ma'am, for the exhaustive background about uh, the International Youth Day 2023 and for providing the highlights on the theme of this year green skills for youth towards a sustainable world. I would now like to take this opportunity to introduce to the participants on this online platform the resource person of today's special lecture, Mr. Japan Gore. Mr. Japan Gore is the managing partner at Go Renewable Technology and leads various teams working on project proposals technical and financial feasibilities, designing, installation, and operations and manage, maintenance of solar PV rooftop systems and ground mount solar power plants. He is a consultant and third party inspector for solar, power, solar PV power plants for more than 10 years. He is a certified master trainer in solar energy technologies from Skill Council for Green Jobs and has trained thousands of participants in solar energy technologies. Mr. Japan has carried out various corp corporate trainings, addressed national and national level government and private sector seminars as a lead trainer, and has designed courses in solar energy and renewable energy sectors for various universities, colleges, and institutes such as. NTPC, PMI, CBIP, CED, Gujarat, Ware Energies Limited, Gujarat University, CEPT University, Gujarat Institute of Solar Energy, and more. Mr. Japan Gore has certificate in wind energy from Technical University of Denmark. He is an active researcher in renewable energy sector and has published various research papers in reputed international journals. To his credit, he is also the 
editorial board member of the International Journal for Innovative Research in Science and Technology. During his academic tenure at the United Kingdom, he has worked on various research projects such as solar thermal heating, cooling mechanisms, solar wind hybrid systems, and more. Mr. Japan Gore holds post-graduation in environmental and energy engineering from the illustrious University of the Sheffields, UK, United Kingdom. So with this brief introduction to the resource person, may I now request Mr. Japan Gore to deliver the special lecture on the theme of this year, Green Skills for Youth Towards a Sustainable World. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, David Ji. Thank you very much, Vasanti Ji and Skill Council for Green Jobs uh, for providing me this platform to discuss with the youth uh, the future uh, problems and future issues and the solutions that we may come up with. So it is a wonderful opportunity for me and all the uh, young generations who are thinking of making their career into green sector, green energy sector, or uh, for that matter, uh, any green related jobs. So it's it's a wonderful uh, platform, and thank you very much for my wonderful introduction. Uh, Vasanti ji has already covered so many things about the green uh, skills and the jobs and everything. So all I will have to do is just get into the session straight away because she has already uh, managed to make that platform and that aura. So let's let's just directly get into the uh, main content of the uh, of, of of the system that we want to. Uh, move on towards so what what we guys are going to discuss today is uh, green skills for the youth uh, probably for generations and we have been we have seen that uh, uh, our, our uh, eats or or our colleagues our, our cousins and all those people have already uh, probably are they they are uh, getting uh, education of engineering or, or doctorate or some sort of a conventional type of the education and their conventional career builds up onto that education but this is a fairly new concept where system are going to change uh, because of the demand uh, the nature uh, the demand that uh, the entire world has created because we want to deliver back to the society and we need to deliver back into the earth and you know? all Right. So, uh, talking about the Sustainable Development Goal that uh, Vasanti Ji was talking about, uh, UN has decided 17 Sustainable Development Goals, uh, including the humanity, including the water, environment, energy, uh, the resources. Uh, so, all these uh, gender equality. So, all, all these things make our entire world worth living into. And because we have been exploiting our earth for uh, past couple of centuries uh, it is a high time and uh, not to not to uh, blame anyone or not to give uh, wrong credits to anyone but human uh, race has uh, really exploited the earth but it is the high time that we give back to the earth we can give back to the society into which we are living and we make it sustainable and when when this sustainable when we are using this word sustainable we actually are talking about something which is going to last longer with the progress as well so we do not want to go back to the uh, stone age we are, we are not talking about going back to the stone age and uh, stopping all the progress that human uh, kind has uh, developed i mean we want to get the better technology we want to get the better infrastructure we want to get the better mobility but not at the cost of earth not at the cost of environment so the sustainability or green skills somewhere is a blend a, a proper mixture a, a proper a combination where we still continue to have a development we still continue to have a better technology we still continue to have better lifestyle but we still give back to the uh, nature we give it back to the earth and we make it worth living we make it uh, so uh, perfect for us and for our new future generations that they do not have to worry about water problems they do not have to worry about the quality of air they do not have to worry about the fuel that they are going to get so so if you ask me what green skills is it is just of a combination of advancement betterment with economical uh, 
economical regulations like economical uh, advancements as well so it's it's a technological economical and environmental benefits that makes this entire system uh, worth and that that type of the skills are the green skills Th these green skills do not uh, give the results on a longer duration i mean we do we do not want to uh, repair the world that we have destructed in next 100 or 200 years we need to repair the issues that we have created in next 50 years probably so all these uh, green skills somewhere uh, delivers the better result in a very short period of time so those type of the skills we guys are going to talk about today and it's not only uh, that we want to do that the entire world is has realized uh, that we need to develop some sort of a, a, a foundation where these systems can, uh, uh, can can be built up and they can sustain for a longer period of time right so these are the different types of the skills and different types of the jobs that we guys are talking about which probably did not exist couple of years back few years back for example environmental law i mean it existed for a certain period of time now but it is it I, I wouldn't call it a conventional type of the education or conventional method right or or sustainability uh, auditor for example sustainability auditor is kind of a skill which did not uh, exist a couple of years back few years back not a couple of years back like let's say 20 years back or 50 years back so these are the jobs these are the skills which are getting developed more and more uh, due to the need of the r and not only that the conventional and conventional uh, uh, roles they are also getting retrofitted now so so what i have written here is retro skilling the worker with the green skills for example if you are a civil engineer or you are an architect you want to incorporate the greenness of your of your uh, work into the system now i mean you want to make the building more uh, energy efficient you want to take care about the HVAC system, heating, uh, ventilation, and AC uh, situation. You want to take care, uh, take good care about the construction material that you are using. Uh, you want to make it aesthetic as well as you want to make it more sustainable. This is just one of the examples. So it is a retrofication of the skill, along with a creation of a new roads, along with a creation of a new jobs, which did not exist, but the jobs which are coming for more than hundreds of years, those job roles, those those career roles are also getting retrofitted to, uh, to these green skills these days. What is the importance? I mean, uh, Vasanti ji has just uh, mentioned about the potential that uh, is going to be required in the green skills. Somewhere around 8.4 uh, million job roles are going to be uh, created in near future and which is somewhere uh, the estimation was in in india that uh, somewhere around 10 crore workforce was required uh, by 2022 yes of course uh, to, the corona duration had uh, stopped or or rather not stopped the hold uh, on the development of certain sustainable projects and everything but now again since 2021 or 2022 at least i would say uh, the things are back on the track we have started uh, gaining our speed uh, and india the, trust me when i say this that india is one of the uh, major uh, player uh, who, who is playing all its cards perfectly when it comes to the environmental uh, systems uh, india being a developing country ha has taken one of the glorious uh, target to achieve the uh, environmental uh, protections like we want to become the carbon neutral net zero country by 2070 we want to become we want to uh, be independent and become uh, at least 50 percent energy efficient by 2047 uh Vasanti jesus uh, recently mentioned that by 2030 we want to have a 500 uh, certain amount of uh, solar and wind she said uh it, it is like 500 gigawatt of the power plant we want to put up uh, uh that is uh, out of which 280 gigawatt is for the solar and 140 gigawatt is for the wind uh the remaining is for the rest of the technologies we are talking about rest of the renewable technologies we are talking about so so india has taken a tremendously ambitious target 
and this ambitious target is taking us towards the next level few years back uh, like i would say 15 20 years back we were nowhere in the graph of renewable energy sector but in last 15 20 years uh, we have gained so much of a uh, speed that we are among top five countries who are uh, who are uh, uh, having uh, renewable energy systems installed every day more and more systems getting installed every day we have installed more than 40 gigawatt of solar systems more than uh, 60 gigawatt of a wind power plants and this thing is causing new and new uh, jobs uh, in terms of green skill green requirements so uh, this is this is something uh, which uh, which is creating uh, interesting uh, and drastic uh, switch over from the conventional methods towards the uh, new methods uh, sdgs and uh, a, a, like we, we want to go for the sustainable development goal we want to have uh, indcs indcs is in, uh, intended nationally determined contribution towards the uh, environment we want to have national diversity the carbon market this is one of the newest economical uh, aspect. It is a new economy. Uh, renewable energy certificates, carbon credit trading, like after saving every one ton of carbon dioxide getting entered into the environment, you get certain carbon credits and you can trade it just like a stock. So these are this is entirely new uh, economy that we are looking at which is getting developed uh, not only in india at the global uh, level but this is this is actually turning everything around and this is making things more interesting uh, in 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 uh, near future so if, if we uh, talk about certain numbers like in business standard uh, by vasudha mukherjee on 30th uh, june 2030 she says like almost 84 companies in india want to hire people with the green skills so according to one of the surveys by uh, business standards uh, they contacted certain uh, uh, india like certain entrepreneurs in india and they found like nearly 85 percent people want to hire uh, people who are with the green skills like they could be having some certification in environment or they could be having some certification in renewable energy or they could be having a certification in in uh, in building design green green building design along with your conventional type of the uh, certificates or, or the degree along with the conventional degree some different certification which is uh, which is showing your credibility uh, towards the green skills it's something that you are giving back to the environment kind of the nature that you are showing to the companies those companies are very happy to hire you uh, because you 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 are thinking about the sustainability and you at certain point can give some good ideas and innovations to that particular company where the company can implement those things and uh, become one of the sustainable company of the of the country or of the world basically so the entire segment it, it, it doesn't have to be just a renewable energy guys there is information technology there is uh, uh, transportation infrastructure there is uh, uh, computer science or any 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 segment that you talk about all these segments are becoming more and more green and when i say more and more green i mean to say they are incorporating uh, the ways where uh, the losses or, or the pollution or the waste waste whether it is a solid or liquid or gaseous kind of a waste that can be reduced everyone is trying to contribute towards their field uh, these days uh, on the same source on 1st june uh, esg uh, the, the, the same source reported that esg would be highest growth by 30 to 55 percent so uh, this is the segment yes uh, there is there is a information technology and there is a computer science and and there are ai and all those things which are uh, getting getting good hype these days like you know someone is talking about like making a career in in ai which is good which is which is obviously good but this segment is growing silently this is some segment which is not making noise you know but still growing at a steady play uh, steady pace 30 to 55 percent of a growth in this segment green skills and green jobs is something uh, which is going to be sustainable for a longer period of time 
I mean, you you can make a career in n number of your choices, and obviously, this the, at the end of the day, everything depends on the uh, interest that you guys have. But still, somewhere, if you incorporate this green skills or green jobs, it gives you uh, some sort of confirmation that your career is going to last for a longer period of time you know what i mean to say it is it is uh, giving you a stability uh, in terms of uh, longer duration of your career because of the growth and the demand that we are looking at actually so there are there are different job roles uh, getting opened up sustainability manager social impact manager i mean i did not hear a social impact manager a few years back when i was studying I, I I don't think there was a job role of a social impact manager probably or government compliance specialist, renewable energy experts, climate change adaptation planner, policy maker. All these job roles are uh, the skills are getting uh, growth by 50 to 20 percent or 25 percent on an average year to year, year to year. Every year these things are getting uh, more and more growth or, or they are catching up the things now see uh, when we are talking about the green skills it doesn't just have to be about the technology or the environmental side okay there are four different segments which unido says that green skill has unido is united nation uh, industrial development organization it says that there are four segments four uh, different skill sets that uh, anyone can get into it engineering and technical skills yes so in case of engineering and technical skills you you make eco buildings you make renewable energy you do certain research and development you do uh, energy projects probably those are the things uh, uh, they, they come under energy and uh, engineering and techno, uh, technical skills but then there is a, a science skills like uh, it, it 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 is uh, probably a value chain towards the uh, utility sector it provides the essential uh, resources such as water, electricity, sewage services, for example. These are, these are the science skills. Then probably you are not from the science background. You still want to contribute towards uh, the environment. And uh, you are from the management background, for example. Then operational and ma uh, operational management skills are there. Like they support the green actions and green activities to complete your organizational structure, for example. Uh, for example, engineering sales climate change analytics sustainable sustainability specialist chief sustainability officer transportation planner uh, uh, green uh, city planner smart city planner so these are the management skills that uh, and when when we are talking about the national policy this smart city planning and everything uh, that is also one of the part of the sustainability goal right so these are these are the operational management skills or uh, monitoring skills if you talk about it. the monitoring skills include some sort of a business uh, uh, ethics or business transactions how uh, efficient that investment is going to be financial uh, availability environmental compliance inspector for example so these are some of the monitoring skills also associated uh, with the green skills so there is there is always some sort of an option available for every one of us that if we want to uh, contribute towards the green skills and we want to learn something uh, for the uh, betterment of the uh, our career and for the for the world uh, no matter if i am an engineer doesn't matter if i am i'm i'm i am i am a mba or i am a doctor or or even i am a safai karmachari uh, there is something to learn about and uh, um, I, I, I can uh, always make my skills more greener. I can always learn a few new things about making it green. Right. So then, then we are talking about the specific distinctions between the green skills and the green jobs. The skill is a knowledge. It is a behavior. It is some sort of a capacity that is inbuilt. You know, it, it comes from ourselves within. Our, our, our thoughts, our uh, working pattern, our uh, morals, our ethics, these are the green skills. And when we are talking about the jobs, the jobs are moreover about uh, doing something towards your specific domain, like engineering domain or management domain or environmental domain, for example. So the, the jobs are more specific to the domains. 
जबकि स्किल्स आर मोर स्पेसिफिक टूवर्ड्स द इनहेरेंट बिहेवियर द बिहेवियर दैट वी आर शोइंग टूवर्ड्स द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टूवर्ड्स द कंपनी टूवर्ड्स द वर्ल्ड टूवर्ड्स आर आर ओन करियर और आर जॉब्स दो सो आर द स्किल्स बेसिकली यूनाइटेड नेशंस से दैट यूथ इज द की टू इंप्लीमेंट दिस एसडीजी गोल बिकॉज you guys are going to be the next in line to implement uh, the the morals and ethics of a company or to decide uh, in which direction a company or the entire market economy will go so according to them i have taken straight from the un uh, uh, un's mouth that they believe in four different actions that youth is a champion of a climate change if youth decides they will definitely contribute towards the climate change action and they will be able to make a big difference into it youth is the advocate of inclusive society we want to become uh, more gender neutral we we want to or or youth they, they understand these things whether it is uh, about uh, any race any gender any geographical locations probably youth of these days they do not make any uh, differences they do not uh, create any differences among these things you know so these concepts are becoming more and more obsolete and youth are they are they are more open minded so in they will include more and more societal aspect and uh, uh, they will be able to make it more uh, open to everyone uh, throughout the globe basically youth will be able to fight the hunger they will be able to fight the quality of air they will be able to fight the quality of water they will be able to fight the quality of land and make it available to every one of us youth uh, will decide uh, the good health and the well being of the entire country or entire uh, world so so basically youth can implement this green skills and achieve these four points basically that's that's what the main concept is uh, vasanthi ji just a few minutes back uh, uh, explained the sustainable goals of india and she very rightly mentioned about the solar and wind energy systems and uh, renewable energy segments and all those things government of india also is implementing uh, other uh, environmental side of the systems as well like i mean we have environmental planning law we have a certain environmental labor law national food security act swachh bharat abhiyan bhai swachh bharat abhiyan no matter how simple it seems but it contributes a lot towards the environment guys i mean cleaning our own mess does it contribute towards the environment on a bigger scale yes it it contributes a lot towards the environment on the on the bigger scale so doesn't matter how small that that uh, action looks like but that small action has a very big impact on a global level if we all do that if we all do that there is a renewable energy generation things uh, atal mission rejuvenation and urban transportation uh, system heritage city developments so these are some of the uh, goals along with the things that uh, uh, vasanthi ji has mentioned these are a uh, few additional goals or, or the schemes which government of india is working on these days if we talk about if we compare the things uh, of different countries uh, in different segments or different sectors uh, us uh, uh, un says that united says united state is more greener in terms of greener skill it it, it doesn't it doesn't uh, explain about the quality of the environment or quality of the things or uh, living quality of the living life and all those things but it tells you about the comparison with other countries that uh, united state in every segment is somewhere greener uh, above average the the dark green line being uh, shows that they are above average for example in india we are above average in agriculture we are above average in green skill in arts we are above average in consumer goods but we are below average in corporate services or or we are below average in financial sector or we are below average in public administration these are some of the sectors which 
require attention and which require us to make more greener and that doesn't mean that we we di divert our focus from other segments like agricultural uh, domains is hamara dhyan hata ke chalo public sector public affair uh, sector ki taraf chale not 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 that way agriculture is doing good above average so we need to continue doing good in that segment but along with that we also need to focus on the public affairs for example if we are doing better in the environmental sector sorry energy renewable energy sector that is good we need to continue doing that thing along with improving in the segment where we are weak we are we are not behind we are just uh, improving on those segments you know because looking at the population that we have uh, of course it is going to be difficult for us to uh, uh, combat uh, certain issues and uh, of course there are going to be certain problems that, that no one can deny i mean even the developed countries have bigger problems than us and we are handling those problems better than developed countries right but we still need to focus certain area over there and we need to focus our, our attention we need to give more attention to those segments where we can still uh, become more and more greener basically so some some segment says for example if i am talking about the different segments uh, right now sorry 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 if i talk about the different segments uh, in other uh, words for, for example by uh, economic times richa uh, patacharya mentions that farming ranching and forestry segment they are greener by 53.29% even construction they are becoming more uh, greener uh, nearly about 50% uh, compared to other uh, uh, other countries oil and gas and mining somewhere around 28 to 77% so we see nearly 15% year on year growth in this in, in these segments basically in particular these segments and there are going to be more green jobs uh by 2050 because you know there, there are certain years 2030 2047 2050 2070 these are the certain uh, milestones that india wants to achieve and there are certain targets that india wants to achieve so every this milestone every time when we reach to that milestone like there was a milestone of a 2022 we wanted to install 100 gigawatt of a solar power plant uh, by 2022 unfortunately we could not because of the corona seasons and all those corona uh, issues and all those things not season my mistake but the corona issues and all those things but it doesn't mean that we did not do anything to meet those targets right i mean though the target might seem uh, very difficult to achieve even if every single effort that we put into this target that matters right so so 2030 another new target 2047 then we complete 100 years of independence a bigger target 2750 bigger target 2070 we want to become a carbon neutral country net zero country one of the biggest target possible and all that thing can only be possible if every single one of us incorporate these green skills there are certain uh, aspects that I want to talk about, and I'm I'm just particularly talking about the Indian market at this point of time. I'm not talking about any international market or anything, right? Of course, these 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 job roles are available everywhere in the global uh, markets. But if if we focus on the India particularly, sustainability management, it is it is increasing by twenty percent year on year. And what what are the skills required in sustainability management? For example, environmental science policy knowledge economics financial skills these are if, if if you understand these skills you can become a sustainable manager sustainability manager or, or governance and compliance specialist for example it is also increasing uh, uh, 20 percent year on year you need to understand the corporate governance you need to understand the regulatory compliances the risk managements or if you want to become a renewable energy expert for example if you want to become a solar uh, consultant and if you want to become a solar consultant, you need to understand the renewable energy technologies, policies uh, which are associated with these renewable energy technologies. You need to understand the market analysis. So these are the skills that we need to brush up as a young person, where brushing up these points will ensure that I have a better career. And not only the better career, I contribute towards the national uh, resources 
you know it's it's a win-win situation for both it's it's a win-win situation for the nation and me when when i'm talking about the particular career things so uh there is a greenness index uh contributed uh, concept uh, made by uh, green industrial skills uh, and uh, the it is between zero to one uh, like the index is between zero to one uh, mm -hmm. like if, if if your job role is more closer to one it is more greener for example environmental engineers that is one of the greenest job job role. you know and, and one it's it's not a, a green in color but it is something that you are doing good for the environment and you are uh uh what do you say uh making the change you are, you are contributing towards the society basically right environmental science technology uh, technicians as well as material disposals or, or, or removers so if i carmachari for that matter or uh, if we talk about the aerospace engineer right now it is somewhere between 0 0.5 and 0 0.3 aerospace engineering is not completely green it is becoming green but it's not completely green or construction worker maintenance and repair worker inspectors they are not that green the green it is becoming green that is right but it is not up to the mark yet it is increasing but it is not up to the mark yet it has not even uh, crossed the boundary of 0 0.5 so these are the segments where everyone can bring uh, new changes and become be, uh, make that that segment more green uh, by contributing towards the skills and uh, understanding towards the market analysis and all those things the effects uh, what you say uh, it says by a greener economic policy which which government of india is uh, implementing or any anywhere in the world when the when we are talking about the global scenario when these things are being more implemented new jobs will be created and it will be having a modest effect on the employment employability the current jobs they will be eliminated more of the conventional jobs they'll be eliminated and it will make a small difference it will not make a big difference in that case but more jobs will be substituted towards the green side that will also become a, make, make a, a modest uh, change in the employability the biggest change that will come it will be from the transferred old jobs to the new jobs and those new jobs will introduce cleaner production in manufacturing it will introduce better retail services without packaging for example just just to give an example like uh, apple and samsung mobile uh, companies they have uh, uh, discarded the plastic covering initially uh, like uh, like few years back they discarded the plastic covering of their uh, boxes then slowly and gradually they discarded the uh, including uh, they eliminated including the charging brake into that box there could be marketing gimmick but still they are doing something uh, something towards the environment like if i already have a, a, a charging brake at my home i don't need any extra one and when i don't need the extra one my, my entire package becomes small and when that package becomes small somewhere though it is a minor somewhere i'm contributing towards the environment you know so these are the small changes but those small changes make the entire job more greener and uh, these are the things that we want to implement towards the things that there are certain expected markets uh, which will slowly uh, increase some markets will moderately increase and some market will rapidly increase for example solar uh, pv segment rainwater harvesting recycling of the paper glass aluminium these are the segment which will rapidly increase in that development or uh, hvac system wind energy battery management systems these are some of the segment uh, which will uh, moderately increase uh, year to year and slowly increase which slowly increase in the sense we will there will be changes but those changes will be seen after a certain period of time these changes will not be seen straight away for example wastewater treatment recycling e-waste e-waste is becoming one of the biggest uh, issue these days right i mean disc discarding all the mobile phones and laptops and the batteries uh, of the mobile phones and uh, laptops and all those things so it is becoming more and more uh, concerned issue these days but yes we will not see 
that uh, becoming more efficient in very near future probably 10 years down the line 15 years down the line that will make certain impact and that will have certain changes in the, in that way now what government of government of india is doing or or any government for that matter is doing to implement the green jobs how how to implement these green jobs uh, efficiently particularly by introducing subsidies by introducing tax uh, benefits by introducing other alternatives this 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 ideas can be implemented for example just to give you an example i mean uh, back in 2007 or 8 or 10 no one had solar system in their house or on their houses i mean probably if someone had uh, that, that that person was one or one or two person in the entire city maximum I, I i don't see uh, that uh, before 2007 anyone had a solar system on their house but government introduced certain subsidy benefits 30 percent 40 percent subsidy benefits if you want to put up a solar power plant on your industry you get uh, accelerated depreciation benefit if you want to put up a solar power plant on a ground mount like a bigger one megawatt or a bigger solar power plant solar power plants uh, they gave a uh, what do you say? Uh, ten years of a tax uh, benefits. They did not have to pay uh, taxes for ten years. Certain taxes, not all the taxes. Certain taxes. They did not have to uh, pay those certain taxes uh, to the government. So these are the some of the what do you say initiatives that government can take so that uh, more and more people lean towards this uh, this this new change and. Today in Gujarat, I, I live in Gujarat, uh, in Ahmedabad, and I, I would say almost 80% of the houses have solar systems uh, on their roof. Uh, nearly 60-65% industries have solar system on their roof. So that benefit, the, the subsidy introduction or the tax introduction, that has changed the entire, uh, entire mechanism of electricity consumption. I mean, we used to get this electricity from the discoms before, right? We used to pay. We used to get it from the coal. We used to get it from natural gas. And this has entirely changed towards the renewable segment. So these are some of the policies that government can introduce in order to uh, make the changes. Now, if we talk about the global scenario, at the global scenario, how the policies are working. For, if you, if you look at the graph and if you look at the four corners, you will see that strong environment and strong coordination, coordinated skill policies on the right top. Uh, bottom right, there is a weak environment, but strong coordinated policy. Weak environment and lack of coordinated policy at the bottom left. And top left, strong environment, but lack of coordinated skill policies. And it gives you idea about every country where that country falls into how how well that country is performing that that it shows for example if you talk about for example uh, if you talk about denmark let's say uh, hold on let me let me highlight it let's say if, if we talk about the denmark it has a strong environment along with strong coordinated policy if we talk about india by right, we might not have a strong environment right but we do have a strong policy and in the very near future probably we'll be having a we'll be jumping from this quarter to the top left quarter sorry not uh, top left quarter my mistake top right quarter we'll be having a, a strong environment along with stronger policies if if we talk about uh, zimbabwe for example here this is zimbabwe it has a weak environment and lack of coordinated policies. Australia, Australia for that matter, it has a good environment, but they do not have any current better coordinated skill policies. So no matter what, I mean, it, it doesn't mean that every uh, developed country has a better policy and good, good uh, vision to implement the better uh, systems in the towards the environment like even usa falls into the same category see even usa falls into the same category so doesn't matter if you are if you are uh, developed countries or developing countries 
you you can do some something better for the environment to be precise in that case now i have talked much about the job opportunities that might create in the future but i want to talk about the entrepreneurship along along with startup india make in india and other uh, msme benefits there are there are any msme benefits right along with all these things an entrepreneur young entrepreneur who are entering into the business these days probably 18 years or 20 years or 25 years of of, of a person i don't know i mean and if if, if the person is uh, is entering into the business they are coming with a greener entrepreneurship concept they they already are clear very clear that they want to do their operations in the best green possible way and due to that they have the opportunity to connect with the uh, national and international uh, agencies there are many national international agencies who are willing to give you hand if your operations are greener so you have a better access towards the conscious market you have a better effectiveness towards the uh, uh, conservation of the natural resources even the government policy and government uh, segments are also supporting you like uh, uh, pollution control boards for example or, or, or ministry of forest for example if if your operations are greener they give you the uh you, you don't have to pay certain fines they give you the certifications very uh they recommend you uh the certifications and the recommendations are uh, good in the in the line so there are certain benefits of becoming the greener entrepreneur you have a healthier workforce when you when you as an entrepreneur are promoting the greenness of the segment your employees will also feel and take this as a responsibility towards the environment towards the nature towards the nation and you will have the healthier workforce healthier surrounding environment basically so the and it, it's not only about the job that we, we guys are talking about it is the business also that are becoming more and more greener you get the better green finances i have already uh, said this thing like uh, green finances is sustainable finance and sustainable finances better climate finance so there are many green finances available national and international level as well so there are certain green finances available now i would i would like to talk about the segment which is created by government of india to tackle this particular greenness for sustainable development for to to uh, focus on the sustainability of the system government of india which has a uh, one ministry ministry of skill and development and entrepreneurship msd has created one specific sector skill concern see msd under msd there is one government agency which is known as national council for vocational education and training ncvt it is an awarding body it, it it registers the awarding body who are able to award certain certifications and msde has also created one ppp organization public private partnership organization institution which is national skill development corporation nsdc so under this NCVT and NSDC, there are certain agencies, institutions. One of those institutions is Sector Skill Council. There are actually 38 Sector Skill Councils. And these Sector Skill Councils are for every job role. Aerospace Engineering, Beauty and Wellness, Renewable Energy, Sustainability. Well, Renewable Energy and Sustainability is under one, one uh, Sector skill council or, or transportation, green transportation, for example, building, construction, all these job roles fall under certain sector skill councils to tackle the sustainability. One dedicated sector skill council is created, and the name of that dedicated sector skill council is Skill Council for Green Jobs. Now, this Skill Council for Green Jobs is overwatched by NSDC and NCVT 
and uh, uh, other uh, ministry of the government of india but scgj this sector scale council is associated with the industries training partners and assessment agencies so what i says uh, scgj does is they understand the requirement of sustainable job rules like what industry wants in simpler words what industry wants which is the most demanding job role they understand the demanding job role they create the training around that job role and they, that gets certified by uh, certain government agencies approved by certain certified not certified but the approved by certain government agencies like ncvet for example right they approve this training courses in other words which are known as qualification packs in other words which are known as qualification packs and green jobs SEG, green jobs implement these courses with the help of training partners for as you can uh, for example as you the institution for youth and development that could be one of the training partner where the trainings are being implemented in solar, in wind, green hydrogen, electric charging vehicle stations, solar electric charging vehicle stations. These are some of the job rooms which can be created. So Skill Council for Green Jobs has 55, total 55 QPs, qualification packs, courses certified by NCBET. And out of these courses, many courses have, have been delivered for since 2015. For example, Surya Mitra, just like Vasanti ji had given an idea about one, one course like Surya Mitra. And Green Jobs has created more than, uh, if I'm not wrong, 5 lakh uh, training. Uh, they, they have trained more than 5 lakh people in solar sector, solar sector, solar segment, basically, particularly. So this kind of a training is being provided along with your conventional uh, uh, courses along with the, our conventional engineering conventional mba conventional ca courses and we can get the certification for these things we get certified and we can implement the systems so these are some of the uh, understanding of msde and cbet which i'm just not going to get into the, at this point of time but i will i will share it uh, then then i'll share it uh, you'll understand the uh, um, what do you say the job role and the uh, importance of the uh, different uh, segments SCG was established in 2015 under a registered society SCGJ skill council for green jobs it is being promoted by mnre ministry of new and renewable energy and cir and it is the only council which is an awarding body certified by ncvet so it is the only body which is authenticated by uh, NCVET and doing the certifications in green jobs. Now, when I'm talking about the green jobs, I'm not only talking about solar or wind, huh? Not this, this solar and wind are not the only green jobs. There are n number of green jobs possible. There is there is hydro, energy storage, battery, biomass. These are the energy sector. If we talk about the environmental sector, solid waste management, municipal uh, waste management, agricultural uh, waste management, or husbandry, water, e-waste, carbon sink, or even green buildings for that matter, green construction, electric vehicle charging stations, pollution prevention and control. And very recently, green hydrogen, Green hydrogen is becoming one of the biggest talk of the town these days. Not, on, not only in India, the green hydrogen segment is becoming more and more advocatory throughout the world. Even in UK, there are certain vehicles which are working on uh, hydrogen right now. Certain trucks and certain passenger vehicles which are working on hydrogen. So, so the alternative to fossil fuel is not only electric vehicle, guys. Yes, it is, but not only electric vehicle. Hydrogen is also becoming uh, one of the major uh, uh, contender 
as an uh, alternative to towards the fossil fuel based uh, vehicle transportation system so scale council for green jobs works in three major segments renewable energy environment forestry and climate change and sustainable development and these three combinedly makes a sustainable development goal basically so all those segments are there yes scale council for green jobs has more demand from the market towards solar and wind that is a different case at this point of time the market is demanding more solar job roles the market is demanding more wind job roles that is a different case but there are different segments available here as well so to quote uh, our honorable uh, prime minister uh, on 15th of august 2017 uh, sorry 2021 my mistake uh, he has given certain aspects like uh, environmental and renewable energy can there we will be having a cng and png network across the country we need uh, campaigning for the better quality of the water plastic free india energy independence abhi maine thodi der pehle bataya ki bhai 2000 and, uh, 2047 is one of the biggest uh, uh, milestone that we want to achieve and we want to become the energy independent by that uh, 2047 we want to achieve circular economy and this is the word which uh, uh, vasanthi ji had also explained you in the earlier of the context right we want to achieve certain uh, net zero targets 50% of the energy requirement by 2030 so these are how, how these things are going to be achieved these things are going to be achieved by delivering more training and more uh, uh, green skills to the youth and green jobs scgj becomes one of the key point in delivering this green job trainings you know because all those training uh, uh, what is a contents and the courses which are which are in line with the industry which are in line with the government aspect uh, expectations they are being developed already and those things are uh, being delivered to to uh, the youth so we have already talked about the green job things expectations so i'm just not going to go into this details but see uh, this is what we want to do in the case of an uh, indian energy segment by 2047 uh, we want to re reduce the dependency on the coal see if, if you see here we are we are more than 50% dependent on the coal and by that more than 50% we want by by uh, what do you say 2047 we want to completely make this circle greener and we want to have a more uh, installed capacity of the green system and now that that green system could be solar or that could be wind or biomass anything but we want to have more and more green aspects green uh, market basically so uh, what skill council for green jobs has uh, identified and targeted is uh, 1125 gigawatt of uh, installed ari capacity more than 50 gigawatt of the equipment manufacturing capacity like solar solar panel and solar cells and even wind turbines they are supposed to be manufactured in india and there are certain policies already active to make it happen you know there are there are many policies uh, already active to make it happen we want to reduce 2.4 billion tons of emission you want to cut it down so these are some of the green aspects that we are talking about top 1000 corporations all energy requirement to be met by renewable energy and this is going to create 3 to 3.5 crore additional jobs in green sector by 2047 3 to 3.5 crores of a green jobs by 2047 basically so uh, that uh, green jobs uh, takes the certain uh, what do you say they, they understand the gaps they study the gap and they fill it up uh, by creating certain uh, qualification packs which i say i i would request you to visit a uh, website of skill council for green jobs and you will find under under publication you will find many good reading material in terms of reports and and study material uh, which is being carried out uh, by by skill council for green jobs like gearing up for the indian uh, workforce green workforce 
or or what is the expectations in terms of uh, job placements and uh, uh, green business and everything so there is a good uh, source of uh, material available on the website of skill council for green jobs under the publication segment where we can understand the future requirements basically uh, so this is this is again once again the same thing what i have already mentioned like 3.5 million jobs uh one like 11000 uh workforce already been implemented and all those things so i'm, I'm just going to skip it over but I'm, i i would like to uh point out here one one thing here that uh this is a specific labor market which is expecting to have this three crore total three crore jo humne bola, three, three crore to 3.5 crore of a job in renewable energy so out of that uh, this renewable energy is going to see somewhere around 14 lakh job the gap uh, there is a gap of 14 lakh job in that way and other segments like sustainable development and waste management all that is 3 crore 47 lakh 35,000 job rules expected in that that future actually so state council for green jobs has also uh, created one online portal where uh, uh, SEMS portal basically, where uh, uh, one can go and uh, uh, can re uh, register for some sort of a free uh, a free trainings, or or sometimes it is uh, paid trainings or something. So I'm, I I would like to give you the idea about that uh, training uh, segments where you can get and go and register uh, for the training platforms. Which is which is uh, known as the e-learning platform actually. So here it is. You see this SEMS dot training is the portal or the, or, or the or the platform where people can go and learn uh, courses uh, online as well. But uh, not only the online courses. That if if you are not inter much interested into the online courses, there are many physical courses also going on in terms of uh, green jobs particularly. Uh, with the help of many different uh, training partners uh, with, who, who are associated with skill council for green jobs so this is this is one of the major advantages that uh, green job has already uh, implemented I would, I would like to just just in few seconds i'll also like to mention that uh, skill council for green jobs has taken participation in many skill competitions world uh, at, at a global level competitions actually and one of them uh we well, we have uh, skill council has won many medals in many competitions but uh gold medal in water uh, was uh, received in 2019 uh in in uh, this uh, scgj uh, facilitated by uh, msd uh, ministry and uh, at, at the world skill competition as well uh skill council has performed a very well uh, green jobs has performed very well uh, these are some of the uh, training competitions where youth can get in a participation like you know you 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 take the training and uh, skill council for green jobs gives you the platform to compete at the at the global level like it gives you the platform to compete at the national level but along with that it gives you the platform to the compete at the global level as well right so in in nutshell in a nutshell skill council for green jobs or or the green job sector green job sector in a way is green hydrogen electric vehicle charging station solar and wind green buildings circular economy energy storage systems and this is what is going to this these are the things which is known as green skills particularly we have already looked at the vision and certain uh, future aspects of the green jobs so I would uh, welcome you to visit the website and in case at any point of time you have any doubt, you can definitely get in touch with us. However, at this point of time, I would uh, like to answer if you guys have any doubts or any queries, unless uh, Vasantiji has, uh, Madam, uh, in case if there is any other agenda at this point of time, I would rest my position here. Thank you, Mr. Japan Go, for that very extensive, very comprehensive presentation. I think with so much of clarity, I doubt whether anybody would have any doubts. But I, I, if they have any, you know, queries, 
from the participants anything that you would like to discuss with Mr. Go because this is a very important, uh, you know, I mean, very uh, you have a very good opportunity to interact with a person from the sector skill for green jobs, which is doing a great job by, uh, you know, by you can see the last uh, the last uh, slide of Mr. Japan Go how much the sector scale is trying to do and how, uh, you know, as in other sectors, India is, you know, is becoming a leader. So India being a leader in, in the green skills also is a matter of pride for all of us. And uh, to be associated on this International Youth Day with the Sector Skills Green Council and listening to all that is being done uh, in our country, you know, to uh, to transit to a green economy, it, uh, it's it's really a matter of satisfaction and also a matter of uh, you know pride for all of us. I'm sure all the participants, all my colleagues, my faculty, the, all the faculty, my I mean my faculty colleague members, and all the students and all the others would definitely agree with me that uh, we are all proud and uh, it has also motivated. I'm sure all of us, you know, in what way each one of us could contribute. Uh, to this important, uh, you know, uh, target or goal, you know, where we should, uh, you know, we should uh, all of us participate uh, to achieve this, uh, to make our country uh, really a green economy by at least by 2047, if not by 2030, uh, at least by 2047, you know, when we can proudly, uh, you know, say that 50% of our GDP is green and, you know, all our energy is renewable energy and we are not depending on we are not depending on those uh, that kind of energy where which is non-renewable so we would like to you know shift focus uh, to renewable energy and i think each one of us as you said each one of us have a role in, in some way or the other you know, even participation as you said in the switch bharat abhiyan is also a way of contributing to this bigger target you know of uh, transiting to the to becoming a fully uh, green economy you know and i think india should be the leader among all the countries you know as it is as, as, as it is be becoming a leader in several other sectors even in the green skill sector so with this uh, i really thank you for uh, uh, japan go for that very very nice very clear uh, you know presentation on this issue i think which has uh, created a i'm sure an awareness on this very important aspect of green skills for the youth. Uh, I would like to, if the department, uh, because it was so clear, but uh, if the participants or anybody have any question for our speaker or any anything that you would like to, you know, even if you, you would like to give your views because we are all, all of you present here on this webinar are young people, youth. So you have listened to what youth can do and what what you should be doing or what you can do. If you have your views too, you know, we would be, you know, uh, eager to listen to all of you. Please, uh, uh, can you feel free to either question or give your so, views Pasandi, on this important Madam, I, I yes. suppose there are people who have uh, raised their hand. So if you, if you would. Uh, already they are in the queue. Yes, 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 yes. Already some people on the queue. Any, any anyone if, if if you want to speak up something please please unmute your mic and just just uh, speak it up uh, uh, I, rather going uh, one by one by the name uh, just in case if good you afternoon, want to say. sir madam if i am allowed yes yes, yes. Mr. yeah thank you very much sir for a beautiful lecture very enlightening uh, in the international youth day that we are speaking about entrepreneurship and green skills very much required for the day but I will also like to know that what is the role of the social scientist? You have emphasized on the role of an engineer, technologist who can really play a very important role in getting up the skills. Although I know that there is something called green economics, which is growing today. But uh, any other field which a social scientist can touch upon to contribute in the green uh, skills, if you can just give us a few examples. Them, uh, social scientists are more studying these days about the mental and physical health of the people associated with the air quality and the water quality and, and specifically about the uh, stress and uh, uh, physical uh, mental uh, pressure that people are going on these days that is also in a way uh, to contribute towards the green skill uh, to be honest with you because uh, 
to to uh, understand the investment green economical investment into this uh, youth uh, who are uh, healthy as i told you uh, as i have mentioned earlier in those four points that youth has to be physically and mentally uh, active and healthy so that not only about the solar or wind that is not only the green aspect the uh, well being uh, mentally and physically that is also the green aspect and somewhere social scientist can understand the social responsibility in this way in in, in best of my understanding thank you very much sir thank you very much uh, yeah i would like to add to mr japan go uh, dr sharmista's uh, question regarding the role of social scientist as you mentioned uh, yes i think research on issues you know i think you have a very important role to do a lot of research on these kind of issues you know how green skills are you know impacting the youth or how green skills could impact and how green, the other kind of you know issues that are so as i said you know research on uh, you know on, on these issues on green green skills you know how how it is impacting how the uh, the uh, the environment or the economy's uh, transition uh, and you know how what are the hurdles or what are the problems that are there all these kind, I mean, kind of problem state issues can be researched by the social scientists i think that is the role the social scientists can play and also creating awareness and also creating awareness among the you know whether it is your own students or whether it's any youth that you come across the importance of you know uh, you know the green skills or you know the when i mean our, our economy becoming a green economy is also a big role that the social scientists can play they have a very big role in this way that's what i think uh, dr sharmista Thank you, I, 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 I would I would completely agree with you, ma'am. Uh, so so it's like if some society is doing better in green uh, field, and if someone is some other society is not doing it, then we can understand the differences. Like why some societies or some country is doing uh, more uh, towards the environment, and so, so what are the problems or hindrances that other country or other society is facing? This this is somewhere the social science can come into. Uh, that, that I completely yes, agree yes. with. That you. is why we have green economics. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's yes. why we have green economics, which is contributing richly. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. So there is so a question there's a question on the chat box. Chat box, yes. From sure. Veronica. She wants to know, you know, uh, how individuals can begin not at the ground. She says we're so overwhelmed by the policies and, uh, you know, a role in different level but how can individuals begin at the ground level right so uh Veronica ji i would say like just there are there are so many policies and so many frameworks but you need to get into touch with the right agency government agency in your own field the, the, somewhere with, where you are trying to uh get a hold on to for example uh let's say if you are into environmental science for example then you need to get, go and understand the GPCB, uh, sorry, the Pollution Control Board rules or, or Environment of uh, Forest Ministry of Forest rules and their policies. And you need to get in touch with certain network of uh, private or government organizations who are already working into these things. And you need to understand the idea behind putting up that policy into the ground. So somewhere, somewhere we need to understand the basic idea that why this policy is being implemented and only by contacting these government officials you will be able to understand that how to implement those policies what are the what are the expectations what are what are what is uh, what is to be done and what is not to be done that's how you can understand uh, that how how to under, uh, how to get into these policies basically right so so i i assume this is what you want to understand i guess maybe i can add to further to this yes. uh, to what Gus question like how individuals can begin from the ground and that too especially the youth you know how we can use it one way of doing it is raising our voice raising our voice wherever it is required for instance <clears throat> if there are you know somewhere where we see that uh, you know some uh, initiative or some activity which is going to harm the environment which is <clears throat> you know going to degrade the environment I think we we should raise our voice. We should not, you know, be affected by. I mean, uh, wonder whether you know by just raising a single voice, you know, whether people will hear us or whether it will be. But raising a voice and ensuring that 
you know, that somebody is saying that this is wrong, let us not do this, is also a very small beginning, you know, that individuals can do. So if you find people are using flexi boards, if their people are using plastics, people are using, you know, you must raise your voice wherever it is, whether it is your home, whether it is your workplace or whether it is in the society or even in a, you know, in a wedding hall. Now people are using so much of these uh, flexi, you know, posters, which are so harmful to the society, but it is going on increasing. If you see, I don't know, I'm seeing in Tamil Nadu at least, every issue, even, uh, you know, a, a funeral is, uh, you know, announced through a big uh, poster, you know, flexi board saying so-and-so is, you know, this is the you know obituary for this person and this is the person and that kind of uh, things also if you are raising your voice and you say let's not do this this is going to harm our this one you know in that way too i think we'll be adding to the green economy by ensuring that such material is not produced you know which will uh, uh, you know which will degrade our economy i think i don't know veronica if you agree with me uh, this this is a small way you know individuals can begin from the ground And sir, uh, there are two more chats oh, on sure. the uh, chat box. One from Dr. Gopinath and one from Swach Varanasi. Right. Uh, Gopinath Ji says, if we... I, I completely agree with you, sir. Uh, and uh, actually, to be honest, like uh, India is doing really good in terms of uh, organic uh, farming and all those things. Uh, the 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 the, uh, the chemicals that we put in, to be honest, this was never our, our uh, tradition. This was never our concept. But somehow, yes, we have we have moved on towards the uh, quick farming and. Uh, certain chemicals and all those things but i yes of course i agree with you that uh, organic farming is the need of the hour and somewhere i feel that uh, many people in society have also uh, indirectly taken this thing into their uh, uh, what is a daily behavior that they are moving on towards more and more uh, uh, green farming or, or uh, what do you say this uh, what did i say uh, good quality of the farming things organic farming things basically youth are taking less interest probably but uh, honestly that is one of the biggest career point to, uh, and and this is one of the biggest uh, one of the good this i mean not to talk about the business thing or something like you know farming is a noble noble occupation farming is a very noble occupation at the same time, it, it can also make a good earning. So uh, youth need to understand that uh, there is a it, the farming is a noble occupation along with good money over there as well. So yes, that 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 can be done in that way, sir. Uh, what sort of efforts from Skill India or Government of India for indigenous community, uh, so, sir or uh, ma'am? I. Uh, government of india is focusing on many different uh, communities and delivering their uh, uh, making up their uh, what you say policies but probably it might not come under the green segment at this point of time it comes under the uh, cultural ministry and uh, cultural uh, diversity uh, department of government of india probably not all the communities are covered at this point of time probably because india is a very diverse country and to cover every one of them is a bit difficult task but uh, i suppose that many many uh, communities who are left behind are getting more benefits these days so green green segment is also coming to those people because i i know that a good good uh, incentive is being given to kach uh, kachi people in gujarat right i mean i'm not quite sure about the community level in varanasi or other states or something but uh, in gujarat for example many many benefits are given to certain community and many ben benefits are given to certain uh, region uh, and i'm sure that other uh, states and other regions are also doing some sort of a work over there but uh, i 
I don't know if I I will be the right person to comment on that point of time um, because I I I don't have every knowledge in that segment to be honest with you. I'm sorry for that. It just a little bit of information that I am reading these days is how government of Odisha is also encouraging the tribals, uh, tribal women in Orissa because Orissa is a state which uh, number of, you know the num tribal uh, population strength is, I mean, is quite high. There they are producing millets. So now millets becoming, you know, uh, there's a great demand for millets and how uh, it has contributed to the, you know, to the uh, prosperity of the tribal women in Odisha by the, you know, initiatives of government of Odisha to encourage this uh, millet production uh, among the tribal women of uh, Odisha. That is one initiative. The other one is the hand in hand, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the NGO, which is also trying to do a lot in uh, encouraging uh, you know organic uh, agriculture among the tribals the produces are being marketed by this organization uh, that's what i've seen so there are a number of such initiatives maybe <coughs> as you said you know just to connect to what dr sharmista was saying the role of social scientists also is to you know have compile all this and as you know document all these things you know and so that they can be replicated across the country i think that's one thing and also what dr gopinath i would just like to add that to <coughs> it's a matter of concern that youth are not attracted to agriculture so you you know what initiatives can be then to encourage youth to agriculture also can be researched can be <laughs> research and suggestions can be given to the government to how to bring back how to bring the youth to agriculture yeah anybody else would like to uh, raise some question or uh, add on something that you would like to say Ma if there are no questions then can we wind up yes sir, david we can. thank you very much uh, to invite me thank you very much for inviting me on a, such a good platform it was really a uh, wonderful opportunity for me. Thank you very much. Yeah, before we close, uh, may I now uh, take this opportunity to propose a formal vote of thanks. Uh, first and foremost, we would like to express our sincere thanks and gratitude to our director, Mr. Debashish De, for providing us this wonderful opportunity to hold this uh, online uh, webinar. We thank you, sir, for uh, all the help and support that you have rendered to us. Uh, next, we would like to thank the Skill Council for Green Jobs for their collaboration with us for holding this seminar. Uh, we thank Mr. Bala Subramaniam uh, from the Skill Council for Green Jobs who has joined us for this uh, in this uh, webinar. We thank you very much, sir, for all the help and support that you have rendered for holding this webinar. And next, we would like to express our gratitude to Mr. Japan Gore for serving as resource person and for delivering this wonderful special lecture on the theme of this day, Green Skills for Youth Towards a Sustainable World. Sir, you have uh, given a thorough uh, understanding of the uh, green sector uh, uh, jobs uh, and the uh, initiatives that the Skill Council for Green Jobs that uh, 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 has initiated for the benefit of the young people in the country today and for uh, providing us a perspective of the uh, career uh, opportunities for the young people uh, up to two, 2047. Uh, we really enjoyed your session, sir, and uh, we have got uh, several insights from your uh, lecture. We do hope and trust that you will uh, render us support in uh, launching the green skill jobs at RJ and FID2. And uh, uh, we uh, next thank the faculty of uh, RJ and FID and the RJ and FID's regional center who, has, uh, who have taken uh, your precious time for joining us. And uh, the students of RJ and FID and students from the regional center who have joined us. Thank you so much. We would like to especially thank Dr. Ramesh, uh, Dr. Arugiraj, Dr. Clayton Michael, uh, and all the other faculty members from the uh, Sacred Heart College, Tirpatur, and the members of the Eco Club and the students of the uh, Sacred Heart College, Tirpatur, for your very valuable participation. Uh, we would like to uh, thank the officials and uh, uh, heads of the various departments of the Sacred Heart College for uh, 
allowing your students to uh, participate in this uh, webinar. We also uh, would like to thank all the student, uh, students and youth from various institutions across the country who have chosen to join us in this webinar. Thank you so much. We also would like to thank the technical team, particularly Mr. Ram Kumar, Mr. Uh, Balakrishnan, uh, and all the others uh, who have uh, supported us in uh, this endeavor. We would like to thank the administration of RGNIYD for uh, providing valuable support and uh, the team from the Center for National and International Collaboration for uh, providing your valuable uh, support, and particularly Dr. Vasanthi Rajendran for uh, her valuable uh, support and guidance in holding this uh, webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, if we have left out anybody, uh, please don't mind. We thank one and all. Uh, who have uh, been instrumental in organizing this uh, program and for providing back end support for successful conduct of this webinar. Once again, uh, thank you one and all for joining us. Uh, your participation has been very instrumental in this uh, webinar. Uh, uh, one announcement we would like to make, people who have not registered uh, will not be able to uh, pull out your details for certificate uh, pro for providing certificates. So we request those who have not registered, kindly register it on our uh, website uh, so that you will get the participation certificate. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we will take a couple of days for processing the certificates and uh, we will uh, send it on your email. And we will also provide you an alert message from uh, which you can download the uh, e-certificate for participation in this webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Just one last Thank word before we uh, close the session. Uh, I would request, uh, I think the outcome of this uh, webinar would be, uh, you know, all the important information uh, and knowledge that we have gained through this webinar, if it is further disseminated among all the, you know, your colleagues, your peer group, the youth, uh, you know, because it's very important, you know, that youth realize the value or the importance of a green economy and how they can contribute to it by, you know, themselves you know acquiring these green cells and what how they can acquire all the information that has uh, that you have gained in this uh, webinar if it could be further disseminated that would be uh, the you know outcome of this uh, positive outcome of this webinar thank you very much to all one and all who have contributed uh, to the conduct of this uh, webinar spe specifically mr japan go and uh, uh, all my other uh, colleagues in uh, in my center uh, David Paul specifically, and all my other colleagues, uh, Jai Lakshmi, Chema, and others, who, with whose support we could organize this uh, this webinar online on a holiday, and on a holiday, all of this, this kind of a participation. So I really thank all the each one of you who have participated. But as I said, I would urge you to further disseminate whatever you have gained, the knowledge that you have gained, among all the others who would you know benefit from such kind of. Uh, you know, would have benefited if they had participated in this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your concluding uh, remarks. Uh, with this, we will close this webinar. Once again, we thank all the participants and uh, the faculty members from various institutions and RGNIYD for joining us. Thank you, one and all, for joining.